Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Srini here and this is the second part of my video uh, in the series of Selenium design in the automation framework from scratch. So we already have seen in the previous video a high level structure of how we can design a Selenium automation framework. So we are going to go a step further and look at the individual components in the automation framework and it will be in depth. So we are going to look at the first component in the automation framework from scratch. And that is nothing but the properties file. So we are going to look at what is a properties file. So this is the key agenda for today. How to write the code for properties file. How do we read the contents of a properties file? And we'll just run a test case, a sample test case to perform this particular action. So let's get started with the practical aspect. So this was the Selenium automation framework design, which we had achieved in the last session. So we will be going a one step further for that. So I'll be writing a code in this particular file called base class in which we will be writing the code for properties file. And this particular base class is the most important component of your Selenium automation framework. The reason is that whatever important necessity uh, code is there, we will be placing it in the base class and we will create a framework in such a way let's say for example you are having different page classes like home page sign up page or let's say a listener class right whichever classes would need those important essential components so we are going to link it in such a way that they will all be extending the base class so base class will become like your parent class in your framework and all of these classes which you see home page sign up page etc in case if you are using a page object design then these will become like a subclass. So they will be following the oops concept of inheritance hierarchy. So these will be inheriting your base class. So let's create the code for properties file. So for that, I would be needing one particular method to be created. Let's say public void. And let me make it static so that I don't have to make the object of the base class to access this particular method. So let me say initialize prop. This is a method just for me to initialize the properties file. And I'll have to basically need some important components here. So what all things do I need to do now, right? So I have a properties file already, which I created last time called config.properties file. So I have just put some data here for all of these properties. I've put some data on the right hand side. So for me to read this particular file content, I have to first create a object of file. Okay. I'm just explaining one by one. So I have to create an object of file because this file is nothing but this properties file. Right? This is ultimately a file. Now, even though the extension is dot properties, ultimately at the end of the day, it's a file, right? So I need to create a file object. So I've created a file object here and I need a special type of object to read this particular file because it's a dot properties file. So that's the reason I'm going to create an object of properties file. Now to read the contents of this particular file, I need to create a object which will be able to read the contents byte by byte from this particular file. So there are different types of readers which are available uh, in the Java library. You can either use a file reader, you can use a file input stream. So it's up to you which you want to use. I will be using file input stream to read the input data. I'll be using this file input stream. So let's create a file input stream object. So you just have to do a declarations here at the class level and just keep importing the files which are required. So we are going to import all the files. So these are from Java util. The file was from Java input output library. Similarly, the file input stream. Now what we need to do, we have to tell to this particular method, which particular file do you want to initialize, right? So I have to provide a file path here. Okay. I have to give a file path here, which particular file do I need to initialize? So one thing is that I would be needing, so I've got the file path, so I can do one thing. I can just initialize the file by using this definition. So I'm going to instantiate the file object. But I have to give the path of what is the path I want to initialize. I'm going to give this file path. Yeah, so this has to be static now because you are going to have a method, static method accessing the 
variable so they also have to be static so i'm going to make all of the three variables also as static so remember one thing these are basic java concepts so a static method can access only a static variable i can't access a non static variable from a static method so i have to make this static okay and we have initialized the file path we have made this public static void and then the method name and next thing what we need is the file input stream so we have already created a object for reading the contents of a file now we need file input stream to be able to read the contents so i'm going to initialize the file input stream like this way but to this particular uh, constructor i have to pass the argument of file object if you see it's saying either we need a file descriptor or a string for the file path or we can even pass the file object so i'm going to take this file object here and complete reading but if you see it's still giving you an error because it says in case compiler doesn't get this particular file at runtime right so we need to handle this exception so this is like a input output exception type so if you are not able to understand the exceptions terminology or what is a file not found exception or input or exception for that matter you can look at my java tutorials playlist and understand the exceptions in detail so i'm going to handle with try catch okay because try catch is something like we are handling the exception then and there itself rather than postponing it at run time so i'm just going to use a shortcut here so we can handle the exception at the code level itself using try catch rather than using throws we can use try catch that's a good way to go about so i'm going to use control space so it will recommend me this so this is a shortcut for that and just copy this exception type here found right in mention the method name that's a good way to uh, get a stack trace you would know where exactly what has gone wrong and take the file object uh, this e object here and just get the message of the exception that's it okay so this is a simple try catch i have read the contents of the file in this file input stream now what next i have to do i have to just make sure that this properties file is loaded so that i will be able to read the file right so i am going to use this prop now i am going to initialize this properties file so new properties but i need to give what particular input stream it has to use so i am going to use yeah so i can just initialize this way prop equal to new properties there is uh, no parameter required here now using this prop object i can use this method called load if you see it will be able to load the content of a file using this input stream method we can even go for reader as well as i mentioned before so i'm going to use this first constructor so prop dot load this method i'm going to use now for this properties uh, object and what is the input stream here fip so just pass the input stream object here again it is going to give an exception that in case if it's not able to load the file right like input output exception so we can just use a second uh, type add catch clause and again copy the statement now another important thing right here it's a java basics things only but just i want to highlight here this is a io exception io exception is always a parent of such kind of exceptions like file not found exception right or end of the file reach etc so you can write like this way a sub exception followed by the parent exception but not vice versa if you were to mention this initially you will be getting an exception because this will not be reachable this exception will be already handled by your parent exception type of io exception so always make sure to have the sub exception first followed by the parent exception okay so we have uh, written the code for initializing a properties file and we have also done the exception handling part see this is completing now we need to read the contents of the property file so let's say i have to read a specific property let's say i have to read application url so i need to have another method now which will be returning the content of the property file so let's say i want to read a property Okay. which particular property that again we will be taking the input from the user 
and since it is expecting the return type to be of string format i have to say return use this prop object now because it's a global variable so just say return prop dot use the method get property and accept this particular argument and that's it this is all what you need to do to establish a connection to a properties file and then later use a generic method like read property to be able to get the value of the property file whatever property we have mentioned we will get the value retrieved from that particular properties file and now we need to just ensure that we are able to pass like uh, call this particular method and also get the prep value for this particular property whichever we want to read so for that reason i'm going to use this test scripts file there is nothing in this file currently and i'm going to introduce one more concept called test ng if you are new to test ng or if you just don't want any confusion not a problem at all i can just go for the traditional approach public static void main and we can uh, explain the test ng concept later on so i'm going to do one thing i'm just going to use a test ng just for a simplicity purpose if you all are new to test ng so let's just go with main okay now for main method i need not create any object for base class for these accessing these methods because i have made these methods as static in nature if you see static so i don't have to create any object of base class so what i can just say is base class dot call this initialize prop method first but we have to give a file path so for that reason i am going to create a variable called file path here and just create a file path so system dot get property so this is a file path uh, this is the attribute which we are using user dot dir this is nothing but user dot directory so this will give you the current working directory that is this particular project whatever location this project may be present at it's going to give you that but i have to access the path to reach till my config dot properties file right because this is the ultimate file path so i am going to navigate to that particular file by saying src then we are under config package so config and then we have to use this escape character sequence because it's escape character so we have to use one more slash to be eligible to a proper path inside a double quote whenever you're using inside double quotes you have to give the escape character and then mention the config properties like this so this completes the file path and this variable i have passed as a parameter to my initialized prop next is i have to get the value red right so i have to mention which particular property i need to read so if you look at this config property i can read any value from this so let's say i go for application url so pass that particular variable here which particular value you want to read and i just want to simply yeah, i can use a shortcut as well so just say property red okay. and just append it so that's all we are going to do in this particular session we are looking at component by component and that's all we want to do it we will be able to run the file so as in the ppt we have seen we will be able to run a sample test to read the contents of the properties file so we have already looked at how to write a code how to read a properties file and now we are going to run it that's all we are going to achieve just we have to make sure of one thing in this properties file there should not be i'm just saying from a real practical standpoint what kind of issues we may face there should not be any kind of a space here let's say i gave a space so this space also actually becomes a part of the variable name or the key so this will not be able to find the key even if you have just given application url you can either do trim so that will trim the spaces but better thing would be to not have any spaces in your variable name and even with the value as well so let's say you intended to open only google.com but you are getting extra space so sometimes uh, like example if you want to read a particular test cases sheet name right but if you give extra space here in this particular resources now if you see test demo sheet there might be a test cases sheet but there not going to be a value with test cases and space so this will give you a problem so ensure you don't have any space whenever you are providing any values here just check it from the cursor perspective that there are no extra spaces before or after the variable name similarly for the value as well so now we are all good to go 
let's run this particular test case from this main method. So just right click and run as Java application. So we have completed our test case and it has read the property for the application URL. So in the next session, I will be showing how to use this with test ng and we will also look at the other components. So that's all for today's session. I hope you have, you know, really learned something new and it is useful for your project. So just stay tuned for my next video and do share with your friends and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done yet. Thank you so much.